Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, tonight actually, I'm going to give you guys another first impression. And um, I've said this on some of my previous first impressions that uh, this is something that I tended to do. Um, I started doing this in the last year or two once my collection kind of swelled to a point where, you know, I could go an entire year and if I wore something different every day, I still wouldn't get through, you know, the same fragrance twice. Um, I started to kind of, before I went to bed, testing stuff on my skin. So as much as I love these tester strips, and I actually bought these from a great company in Gross. Uh, they're supposed to be um, specially made for perfume. So instead of just, excuse me, cutting up a piece of paper and spraying something on there, I have some uh, tester strips that I paid pretty decent money for as far as strips go. But I still prefer skin. Um, if you spray on paper, Sometimes paper can like amplify the top notes uh, and I think brands count on that nowadays. They count on a customer going to a counter, spraying something on a blotter, smelling it and going, wow, this is the best thing I've ever smelled in my life, buying it, getting home, and then they wear it and it doesn't smell the same, but they don't care because the sale has been made. Um, so a lot of brands tend to focus on the top notes kind of thing is what I'm getting at. They don't focus on the entire dry down. So the way that I wear my fragrances, a lot of times I will spray in my collarbone, in the cuff of my collarbone right here, if I'm wearing like a polo or like a button up, a button, uh, up shirt that's unbuttoned where I can get there. But if I'm wearing a t-shirt like this, I'll usually just spray my neck or the front of my neck and then the top of my hands. I usually don't spray my clothes because... I get a better feel for how our fragrance um, tends to develop on skin. So before bed, I'll use these pulse points here and here. And the scent that we're going to uh, talk about today is a fragrance from a house that I own no bottles from, okay? It's a niche house, and the name of the house is um, Floracu. Uh, you can see it right there. Um... Well, you almost could see it right there. Come on, baby. There we go. Floracu. Um, and the name of the fragrance is A.O. I think Nose is where the guy that sent me this actually got the sample from. And I got this off of a gentleman that I did business with. The only time I've ever swapped a fragrance. I swapped a bottle of Aventus for a um, paper label the vintage Roja, you can see the old caps that he used to have before he got all fancy schmancy, and this is Scandal, and I swapped a bottle of uh, Aventus for this, and I'm very glad that I did. This is probably one of my favorite citrus, you know, type fragrances in this genre. I like wearing this a little bit more than Poor Monsieur by Chanel and stuff like that. So, but this isn't, video isn't about that. This video is just to say that when I bought this or sw swapped it with the Ventus, he sent me some samples. And one of them is from this house that I've never heard of, Flora. Well, I've heard of them, but I've never actually smelled anything from them. And the reason that I've heard about them is they were one of the brands that gave out free bottles. And I think the fragrance that Ash got a free bottle of that he did a review on was called One Umbrella for Two. And their bottles are actually kind of a cool idea. Uh, it looks like a regular bottle, but the cap is like this big um, umbrella handle looking thing is all I can kind of equate it to. But you unscrew it and that top is actually a decanter. So you can take the top off and put it in your pocket and go and then take it back home and put it back on top of your bottle. Cool idea. Not worth the price that, you know, they're asking. I think on eBay... Um, these are going for a couple hundred dollars, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they're cheap. They're niche. Uh, and actually, the people that founded this brand, Floracal, uh, are the same people that founded Memo Paris, which I also own zero bottles of. Uh, Clara and John Malloy, apparently, and they founded this house in 2017. They have 25 perfumes already. So this is kind of my problem with some of these niche houses. They're a French brand um, inspired by Japanese culture, traditions, and ceremonies and named after haiku poetry. So um, you can already tell I'm probably a little bit lukewarm on this. I, this isn't the first time I've smelled this sample because I wore it to bed once before 
and I've pretty much used up all the juice right there. Um, so I've smelled this once before and I just thought before I do this, you know, chunk this sample one more time, I'd just give you guys my thoughts. So the name of this fragrance is called A.O. And I couldn't find a perfumer. There isn't one listed, which is a little disappointing. Um, but I'll tell you basically what this scent is. This scent is a fruity uh, note accord that's built around the note of fig, which I actually tend to like fig if it's done properly. Here, it's almost like a candied fig. So if you think about if you took a real life fig and dipped it in this uh, you know, how you make like a caramelized apple, um, in, in, in the Halloween time, bobbing for apples kind of at a, at a carnival, you know, you've got this, this apple, but it's full, completely surrounded by sugar. And that's what the fig feels like to me in this fragrance. It is very, very sweet. Now it is a niche fragrance. So the ingredients are good. Um, you're, you're, you're getting high quality ingredients and for, you know, 260 or whatever these are priced for, for, um, I would certainly hope so. Uh, let's see if I can get an actual price because I'm not a hundred percent sure on that price. Um, two, actually I lied. $300 is, is one on eBay for 50 ml. Uh, for this exact fragrance and another one is uh 200 no box no cap and a tester so it, it looks like 300 actually might be the pricing point for 50 ml again perfume prices are getting just outrageous in my opinion but the note tree is a simple note it's not even a tree it's just a smattering of notes you get fig you get violet which it almost feels like they're inspired a bit by rosia with this violet note. It feels like they tried to replicate Roja's violet um, patented vi I've told you guys before, I feel like Roja has like a patented floral accord in his fragrances. Uh, the Lily of the Valley, the Jasmine, the Rose de Mai, the Violet, you know, and they've kind of built that accord and they use it across multiple Roja fragrances. I feel like they tried to copy that here and failed. They got close, but you can tell it's kind of an imitation, if that makes sense. And then there's this tangerine with this extremely sweet tonka bean. The tonka here is... And the problem that I have with this tonka is instead of it starting here and going like this as the hours go on, I feel like last time I wore this and now that I'm wearing it again, this spray is about half an hour old, by the way. I feel like that sweetness is staying level or maybe even slightly increasing a bit, and that bothers me. Um, there's also this white floral accord, jasmine, that mixes with the violet and fig and gives off a traditionally feminine-leaning scent. Now, I don't have any um, problem with gender and perfumery. You guys know that. I own poison. I own opium. Uh, I own Habanita, I own Shalimar, I own all these uh, feminine targeted fragrances of the past and I own them and love them and all that good stuff. Uh, but this I would say just if you're somebody who worries about that, this is feminine leaning. There is myrrh oil in this, which I think is the part that I like the most. The myrrh and the Haitian vetiver are the two parts that I tend to like the most in this scent. Because... Um, you know, I'm not a vetiver lover. I'm not a self-professed vetiver lover. Let's put it that way. I kind of tend to like when vetiver is not the main note, but it's part of an overall composition, which a lot of times that's how it is used. It's almost like rose. I mean, you know, even if rose isn't listed, there's an old saying that 99.9% .9 of perfumes contain some rose because it's just part of the accord. Um, and I feel kind of the same way about, about vetiver. It's used even if in very small quantities to give the, the fragrance some heft and roundness and a base. And, and that's what it does here. I actually sprayed it on both wrists cause I figured I would just try to use up this sample. So I've got it on both of my wrists here. And there's also a pink pepper note, which 
I don't really get this fiery pink pepper accord if I if I have to be honest. I get more of this tangerine, violety, tonka fig thing going on, and it's not really my cup of tea. Uh, this is a pass for me. Uh, it's compared to fragrances that I actually don't know and have never smelled. It's compared to um, Kalina by La Tizaine Parfumeur. It's compared to um, Figuer Eden by Giorgio Armani. Again, one I've never smelled or heard of. The one that I have heard of that I have never smelled is Philosikos by um, Diptyque. Um, it is compared to Philosikos on Fragrantica, but six people say yes and ten people say no. So I think you can kind of get the drift of what this fragrance is leaning towards. Um, I have so many of these little samples that, you know, I will never give a full wearing to most likely, but I will test them out before bed from time to time. So, you know, I just figured it might be an interesting way to learn about a new house. Um, this house, this, this creator, if you will, Clara and John Malloy, uh, Memo Paris never impressed me. I, 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 um... You know, don't think anything in in the entire line would move me to uh, buy a bottle. And there's I, the thing that I the thing that bothers me about niche like this is, you know, I was talking about this in my video earlier from 1980. I did a watch my previous um, video from today on the um, year of 1980 in perfumes. Uh, this year in perfume, 1980 was the year that we highlighted, and I mentioned that, you know, with Patal Parome, um, Jean Carlio had worked on that fragrance for five plus years. It wasn't something that he just cobbled together and threw out there. And, you know, to, to release 25 fragrances for a brand uh, in, let's say, let's give him the benefit of the doubt say five years, okay, 2017, it just, the clock just turned 2022 on, as I'm videotaping this, it's still January technically, uh, and so let's say five years, they put out 25 fragrances, so for somebody like me who smelled thousands of fragrances, this is, um, I, I was I was reading some of the Fragrantica comments, and by the way, there's not many. This is something that completely flew under the radar. It came out, I guess, sometime between 2017 and now. I have no clue. There's no release date listed. Um, but there are only like four reviews on Fragrantica that go back to about a year ago. And one guy calls it a masterpiece, pure class in a bottle. Another guy says it leans feminine, but he reaches for it anyways. Another lady says the best fig fragrance I've encountered. It, it smells like a fig Newton. Um, and so, you know, for me, it seems like this brand is pizzazz and flash and, and gimmick with the atomizer. Like we can't go get little decanter atomizers and put it in there, you know. So this brand, I think, is maybe more for somebody who's newly into niche and all they've smelled is designers and they smell this and go, wow, that's the best thing I've ever smelled. That's not me. Um, and so I would say this is a hard pass. I'm not saying there's other stuff from this brand that might not be good, but, um, you know, the fact that they only got talked about when they sent out the free bottles, I haven't really heard much about the brand since then. And they've got 25 fragrances. Most of them have no reviews or one, two, or even three people took the time to write a review on Fragrantica. So, you know, this brand, maybe a little bit like Memo, One Umbrella for Two has 69 reviews. That's the one they sent the free bottle out of, I believe. Um, so anyways, just wanted to talk about this house. You never hear this on my uh channel otherwise i don't own a bottle i'm not into the brand uh eventually i'll get to the fragrances that i have full bottles of but before i threw this uh decant away i figured i'd share it with you guys so if you have any experience with the house um please let me know if you're only here for the vintage fragrances sorry it's my channel you're gonna have to suffer through kind of wherever the road takes me and sometimes i feel like uploading something random and here we are flora cows a o 
So, um, like I said, if you have experience, do let me know. But probably for the big frag heads, this is going to be a medium or a pass. You know, most likely a pass. But um, let me know if you have a different set of opinions. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow with another fragrance review. Cheers. Good night.